What's going on Ableton Advanced Community? Today we're going to be getting video inside Ableton Live. Be it this is your first time trying to install the software, or you might be having troubles with the codex, or today you woke up and you tried to drag a file into Ableton and got that red error message. This video is for you, but first, hit that like and subscribe and watch this intro video. Let's talk about this overlook and misunderstood feature of Ableton Live. Because let's face it, presenting yourself and branding are important and this skill can help you. It also can open up some financial opportunities for you as skills that you can offer others, such as film scoring, cartoons, voiceover, adding sound and effects to films and drone videos, and just working with video in general. Overall, a great skill to have, but I see a lot of others have issues with installing and maintaining this feature. There seems to be some multiple codec packs. Some work, some don't. If you install one and it doesn't work, you need to uninstall it. Uh, there's some other things that could happen with software issues and compatibility. Some things can update or I've had issues with my monitors causing issues. So I've been using this feature in Ableton since nine and I use it probably every other day. So I use this feature a lot and I'm gonna share my experience with you on how I've gotten through some of the problems that I have faced and here we go. All right, guys, we're going to start at the very beginning here at the Ableton knowledge base on their website. I'll put a link in the description as well as a link to the online manual. All right, we're going to scroll down first here on the list is recommendations for optimal playback of video in live. Now, I feel like this could be um, elaborated on a little bit further because depending on the system that you have, you're going to get different results and editing audio and video inside of Ableton might not be for everyone and your CPU and GPU might not be able to handle it. So. GPU is not something uh, a lot of people talk about within Ableton, but there's a lot going on with a GPU, especially with third-party VSTs and uh, displaying the information on the screen can be a little demanding, especially if you have multiple projects going on. So um, yeah, that is something that needs to be addressed before you even kind of uh, come in any further as uh, something that's possible for you. And if your system is on the lower side of the specs, then you're going to have to do some workarounds with making a dummy clip and things like that. And that's what this is talking about right here is, you know, depending on your specs, you're going to get different results and you're going to have to use it within Ableton different ways. So a lower CPU, we're going to have to do some uh, different techniques. I'm going to go into that in a minute. And for higher CPUs, I still kind of use the same technique because it just gives you some more wiggle room and doesn't stress Ableton out a lot. So let's go back to this here in a moment and let's actually get into the codec packs and actually get you running. So down here it says re recommended codecs for Windows Live 64 bit here. Now, maybe you have another codec pack installed and, it's, and, it's, and it might not be working for you or you need to install one or you have a new computer. So this is where you're here either because you don't have one and or that you have the wrong one or there's a conflict. So this is where most people get a an, an issue and have a problem. And let's get through that real quick. And, and let me tell you how I've overcome my issues with getting through here. So they recommend this highly media splitter. If I said that right, I can put the link in the description down there. Uh, and it's worked for me. It's the one that I have currently. But before this, I had the community codec pack or the CCCP, I think it was. And a recent uh, compatibility issue with my monitors has caused me have to go back to this one here. So that's why I'm kind of making a video here because I've just had a recent issue that I've had to come into. And this, this gets brought up in the group a lot. It's a question that gets sprinkled throughout the year within the community, but it doesn't get addressed fully. And I, I think it's misunderstood. And here I am. I want to help everyone out to try to to get this into their uh, skill set. So Highlight Media Splitter is what they recommend. So install this and see if it works. 
And if it doesn't work, then you need to probably go into your uh, your installation folders and uninstall and see what you have in there. Now, I'm not sure how this looks. I think I went into me, uh, to the Windows uninstaller that they have, and I don't really like it. I recommend Revo uninstaller. I'll put a link in the description for that too as well. So I'm going to show you what this kind of looks like in here. I'm going to pull it up and show you all my programs. So in here we can see where is it at? I have highly media splitter right here where my cursor is at. And if you have anything else, uh, you have to look at some of the Kodak packs and, and see, but I think it's highlight the highlight media splitter and CCCP. And then I'm not quite sure about all the other Kodak packs. There could be compatibility issues. Like I said, there is a million possible probably problems that could happen. Um, I'm just letting you know the two that I am aware of. And I had to come in here and find the, the community Kodak pack and get rid of it. And I had to reinstall the Highlight Media Splitter after I had some issues with some other compatible um, uh, problematic software. So we're going to get into that in a moment. So this is, I would recommend coming in here and finding those programs and getting them out if it's not working. Uh, after you've installed the Highlight High Media Splitter, look for the, uh, you know, we can go and uninstall all of them at once, you know, uninstall the Highlight Media Splitter and the CCCP, and then try one, and then try the other. And that usually is going to solve your issue and get you running and going again. So now with that being said, the issue that I had was with a, monitor that i installed i installed it why the system was on or plugged in or there was some kind of an issue where i needed to uninstall all the drivers and everything and it really caused an issue with vulcan so some of my games and some vulcan um uh it has something to do with the gpu uh, items were not working and therefore Something else happened, and, and, it, and it messed up. It installed a different Kodak pack. So all of a sudden, I, I, I woke up one day, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to make this little short little video. I got some voice uh, overs to do real quick here, and I dragged the video into Ableton, and it was like, nah, -uh, you're not going to do it. And I'm like, what is going on? Uh, I also found out that I couldn't play a certain game, and then a Vulcan issue was going on, and it took me a while to figure out what happened. And the only thing that I changed on my system was a new monitor, and come to find out, installing the monitor and plugging it in in a certain sequence messed everything up. And I had to wipe everything out and, and reinstall everything. So here I am making the video and maybe helping others out to try to troubleshoot something. Maybe it's been working for you just fine uh, forever, just like I have, uh, you know, like, like it has for me. And you're here. Maybe that's a, a solve your issue. I hope I can help some. Now, when it comes to using uh, uh, my techniques for what I do in here to make it easier for me and a better experience after you get this running, depending on what kind of CPU you have, um, we're going to talk about that. Now, I use PowerDirector. If I can get that over here real quickly for you. Now, I use PowerDirector. Now I'm going to say that probably most software is going to have this. And like they said, they had handbrake. It's going to be able to um, kind of uh, manipulate the file for you. And I think you can do this in VLC maybe too as well. So whatever software that you're using, what you're going to want to do, and this is the technique that I use, and the technique that they suggest for using if you have a lower CPU or GPU power um, in your system. Now, depending on what your power is, uh, you might want to do this uh, in, in different styles and different levels. So in here, I have different codecs that I can choose at the top here. And then down here, you can see I have different uh, variations and, and, and qualities of this. So I have a, a 640 by 480 at 24p uh, at 6 megabytes per second. This is the lowest H.246 um file that i can convert uh the video into so 
if you have a very weak PC, this is the file that I would probably use to put inside Ableton. So you're going to have this high quality 4K or 1080 file that someone's going to give you and you want to put that in Ableton and even with a, a great PC, depending on the length of it, I, I just wouldn't even do it. Even with a beast PC, I'm going to make sure that I have a lower container file just to, just to, to be a placemat within Ableton so I can see it. And then I will uh, be able to use Ableton and the power to create the audio that I want, if that makes sense to you. So I won't go down this far, or maybe sometimes I will. It depends on what I'm using and what I'm doing. But then I think that sometimes though, what you're looking at is, uh, you know, like your frame rates and, and your, um, uh, you know, to be able to match things up. So you want to pay attention to that if that's important to you. But most people are probably just going to be playing in Ableton, uh, to do some sound branding or working with, um, you know, I, I've done some drone videos and things like that. So m mostly people that are going to be worried about that are probably not working within Ableton because it's not the preferred doll for doing it, but it can do it. It can do it very successfully, but I think it takes a little bit of finessing uh, within the program to get good results and to have a good time with it. So, with that being said, this is what I do. I make a, a, a container or a shadow file, and I use that within Ableton. Now, I'll drag that file within Ableton, and I will manipulate the sound within Ableton, and I, and I do all my cues within there, and then I will pull the, I'll export the audio out of Ableton, just the audio, and stitch that back onto the high quality version within the video editing software that I have, which would be PowerDirector in this case. This is the technique that I have been using for, uh, you know, since Live 9 came out, and it's been very great for me, and I haven't had any issues up until recently, and that's because of me installing a monitor. So now I my, my computer specs are at 8700K, and I've got dual 1070s, so... Uh, even with the power that I have, I can see live struggle with things if I just pop in a file. So, And then why would you struggle it down if you don't need to anyway? Because you need to give as Ableton as much headroom as possible so you can work within the program without limitations. So I hope this video helped you out. And hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.